Radio, powered by the sound of OBO for over 30 years now, 92 Zoo. I'm Tony, and right now joined by Fitz and Noel of Fitz and the Tantrums. How you guys doing? Hello. What up? What's Thanks happening? So for coming by and checking out our bus. Yeah, it's nice in here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's VIP up in here. It's like air conditioned, flat screen TVs. There's a disco ball. There, oh, I just noticed that. Nice. We're going to oh, have we a party in pole. here. We need like a, a, a little pole in here. <laughs> Well, um, I guess uh, we've got Fitz and Noel. Now, do you, do you guys actually, was James your college buddy and that's how you met her? That's exactly right. Uh, I was working on a couple early ideas that became Fitz and the Tantrum songs and called up James, who I went to sc uh, college with, and he's just an, a phenomenal musician. And we just said, this stuff's got to be played live. These are songs about love. We need an amazing female vocalist. Who should I call you? I just worked with Noelle. Called her. Four other phone calls. We went in and rehearsed. And it was like we'd been playing f for our whole lives together. And a week later, I booked us a show. And, and we have never looked back since. Six years later. That's awesome. It's nice when something clicks. You know? It is. Oh, yeah. Because it's, you know, especially with bands, you always hear the story. It, it's the hardest thing to keep a band together. And it, it really is. The synergy's got to be there. Everybody has to be on the same page. And it just kind of seemed like the timing lined up for us perfectly, you know. Yeah. And here we are. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's 15 years. a long years. time, yeah. Because when you're on the road, you're living together, you're eating three meals a day together, you're trying to work, be creative, create together. It's, it's a lot. Who's the troublemaker in the bunch? Who's always making it rough? Fitz. <laughs> She's throwing Fitz me. Oh, yeah, she just totally threw me under this bus. No. <laughs> <laughs> on the bus. On the bus. <laughs> Very cool. Well, you guys actually, with this, a um, couple of weeks ago, you kind of uh, booted Congos down off that number one spot there for a minute, and you uh, did something that only three artists have ever done before. I you know. Yeah. Your first two singles. Uh, yeah, which was pretty incredible to be in, uh, who is it? It's. Fun. Fun, uh, Alanis, uh, Alanis and, and, Green and Green Day. Day yeah, We're like, right. you know what, we'll take it. Uh, yeah, this has been a wild ride for us. You know, we just celebrated the year anniversary of More Than Just a Dream, the second album. And two number ones, we've got an amazing label that believes in us. They see like a couple more singles off this record. So we are just doing what we do best and love to do, which is play shows and be on the, ro on the road and spread the word, you know? That's, yeah, and I know you get a great response to your live shows and sometimes you know you'll hear artists say stuff like you know we're obviously not doing it to hit number one we're doing it because it's what we need to express about ourselves but that is that's a validation of sorts that's probably fair yeah fans. absolutely i mean from day one i, I we got to give credit to our fan base you know we were able to really grow our fan base organically because we were really forced to have to play you know this like changing tide in the way that you actually are able to make a career out of doing what you do is going to your live show because nobody can steal your concert ticket you know so we always really catered to the fan base going to our live shows doing 110% didn't matter how many people were actually in the room and without that fan base I, you know and people taking a chance on us in radio and all the program directors like getting behind us and wanting to spin our music early in the early stages we wouldn't be here right now you know so we have True. to thank all of those people that supported us from you know from the very first EP uh, songs for a breakup volume 1 all the way to picking up the pieces until now we've had an amazing ride for the last 6 years well i'm glad to hear it you guys do have a way of it, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a small venue or a big, you just have a way of engaging this audience and it's a great sound. I'm glad that um, some, you know, some commercial success is wobbling with that. Thank you. It means we can buy lunch today. <laughs> but can you buy the zoo for lunch today? <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Gene's attitude, I'm sure. Uh, well, we'll, um, we'll just say you guys are going to be on the Palladia stage. Yes. That's right. Have you caught any acts already? We saw a little bit of uh, Need to Breathe while we were doing some interviews yes. for VH1. Uh, I want to check out a little bit of Tegan and Sarah. I want to see the Killers later, for sure. It'll be cool by then, so I can hang out. I want to check out some Tegan and Sarah, whether they're playing or not. For real. 
I'm, I was just saying I got a little crush on those two. I do have a little bit of a crush on them too as well. The elves. The elves. Well, we're so glad you guys made it down here to play Hangout Fest. I definitely appreciate you guys swinging by and taking the time. Thank you. I know you guys are very busy. But oh, but our pleasure. I don't know if we'll be back at the Soul Kitchen, but maybe. Who knows? We Bring it. See you down there. I know Maggie loves you guys being there. So. All right. Well, uh, we've been joined by Noel and Fitz from Fitz and the Tantrums. Hope you guys have a great show tonight. Look forward to seeing you on the beach. And we've got more cool stuff on the way with Hangout Radio. I work by the Soundmobile for 30 years now.